Happy Friday, boys. Hello, West Coast. So tonight, I think we're just going to talk. Uh, we're going to catch up, right? No special yeah, guests. Yeah, no, no, no. Get, we are guest free. We, we, this is the guest free episode. You know, they're a burden. They really are. They really are. They talk and they talk and they talk. Blah, 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 blah. Buy my thing. Buy my, buy my whiskey. And then the, and never then the catering stops. costs. Oh, my, oh God. my God. The, the limousine. The, the Ubers. Overhead. I would like to disavow everything that was just said. We really like our guests. We like them a lot. I don't know what these two are talking about. Well, you know what the problem is? Um, our, you know, our, our catering app got hacked, and they wanted like five million dollars ransom to get back on, get us back online. So, I don't even know. booze dancing can get hit by ransomware. That's right. You know why? Because people want us. People love us. Uh, they do. Well, the, the Russians really love us. That's, Absolutely. That's who really wants a piece of this action, huh? Uh huh. <laughs> All right, let's roll the intro real quick, and then we'll, we'll get on with the show. Welcome to What We Watch When We Drink, a booze dancing media podcast featuring lively discussions about movies, TV shows, and anything else that we're watching while we drink our favorite boozy libations. If you enjoy this podcast, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever else you get your podcasts. And you can find us on boozedcasting.com. And if you like what you hear or have suggestions for us, want to send us some love letters, hate letters, whatever, ransom letters, email us at boozedcasting at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. We haven't had a good ransom letter in a while. Speaking of ransom, did you ever see that movie? That was a good movie. Ransom. No. Didn't see it. That was the one with Mel Gibson and uh, Rene Russo. Oh, what happened to Rene Russo? That's a name from the past. I don't know. I'm not sure what happened to her. The best scene in that is when Mel Gibson piles all the money up and he says, you're not getting any of this. I'm paying this to whoever brings me their, your head. There you go. <laughs> a highlight in the Mel Gibson uh, filmography. Well, boys, we have not been together for quite a while. We, we have not sat around and just chatted and talked about what we've been watching and, and drank together. So why don't we start off things with a, a little drink? So, all right. So, so this, is, this is the catch up episode, right? It is a ketchup episode, and also mustard and possibly some mayonnaise. Heinz, future sponsor of <laughs> what we watch when we drink. Are we drinking, guys? What are we drinking? I have the Holy Hand Grenade, which would be the, the Glen Rothes 12. I just went with the Glen Marangi 12, the Quinta Rubin. A three of a kind. I got a Glen Scotia, 15-year-old. Any Glen will do. Any Glen will do. Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Gentlemen. Cheers. We have not Gentlemen. been together for a while. All right, gentlemen, we have not been together for so long. Uh, I think we've been through, there have been two seasons of te television since we last talked like this. And I think uh, um, there's been a couple different late shows that have come and gone since then. Um, what's been, what have we been watching? Mike, what about you? I, I'm a prisoner in my you? house. I've got too many people and not I'm enough sorry. televisions. So I'm stuck watching anything that's Marvel or DC with the boys and... Pretty much just Grey's Anatomy and Schitt's Creek reruns with the girls. That's all they want to watch. <laughs> what season is Grey's Anatomy on? They just signed for 18. They're at 17 right now. They're going to be 18. Okay. Now, that was a, a Shonda Rhimes. Shonda program. Rhimes. That was her first big show. Mike, you mentioned uh, the MCU. My uh, youngest, my 18-year-old, she has uh, took it upon herself to watch everything from beginning to end in the last... Like let's say let's let's say the last you mean week, the movies but it's probably or, like two or the shows. Or? But she's uh, movies and shows, Disney Plus first movie all the way till till whatever the, those current shows that are on. What uh, was the first movie? Well, they, they they did a couple of Hulk movies before they did anything, right? But they were kind of crap, and they did yes. Fantastic Four and something else mm -hmm. with Sony or one of the other theater one of the other chains before Marvel kind of reeled it all back in. No, Eric Bana is one Hulk, and then uh, Edward Norton's another Hulk. And then they right. moved into the good Hulk, Ruffalo. But that's all yeah. Yeah. all MCU, all same production. So I was surprised she wanted to do that. Well, they, they say you should watch WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier, because some of the things they're saying in those are like Easter eggs for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse and the new Spider-Man that's coming out. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but the MCU... It's actually connected to the Pixar movies. It's all related. It's John Ratzenberger. John Ratzenberger is the villain in everything. Not true. And there might be a tie-in with all of the Star Wars movies. Well, Thor just keeps muttering the word Rosebud when he's asleep. So I think it even goes all the way back. 
<laughs> yeah, you, you know what the common thread is? It's Disney. Yeah, it's it's green. The common thread is green. And my question is, how do we get a piece of that action? Well, the future sponsor. <laughs> Disney Plus, future sponsor of what we watch when we drink. How are we doing on drinks, by the way? So we, I've got the Glenrothes 12. Uh, Mike and I reviewed this a while back. This was like the new edition. Uh, let's see what it says here. Matured only in sherry seasoned oak casts and bottled at natural color. You know, it's only 40%, but I, I think it's it's good. I really like it. So I've had it for a couple of years now, and I'm finally getting to the bottom of the bottle. Uh, I think I think based on the, the, the two-inch necks, man, you should just be pouring that out. It's got to be bad by now, right? That's true. Uh, that was a long time ago well, we did that. Yeah, but, but that bottle's got all that air in it now. You should just be pouring the whole thing out, right? Pour it all out into my glass, and then take it from the glass, and it goes into my belly. I got the Glamorangi, and I'm a big fan of that. And uh, the first... Which one was I got that? the Quinta Rubin, the port cask. Okay. 12 year old. Yes. And uh, and again, I wanted something that was, you know, only at like, you know, under fi- under a five while we're talking oh, here. No fives? When other people are talking, I can drink something higher than that because I don't have to contribute much. <laughs> but now, maybe it'd be best if I'm not slurring every other word. Uh, the, the very first extravaganza we went to, this kind of opened my eyes up to the, the different kind of barreling and finishing for, for whiskeys. And that's one of the first bottles I ever bought. So every once in a while, I'll go back out and I'll buy one and be like, yep. Yeah, it's still really good. So we had a Glen Scotia 10 expression tasting with uh, our whiskey club out here. It was spectacular. And a couple things you couldn't, that were actually only from the distillery that our friend, uh, Bozzy Karasu brought or got liberated, sent to us. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm working my way to that tonight. But it started with a 15, which is, you know, that's just excellent whiskey. And it, it's got that whole Campbelltown kind of vibe to it. There's a little peat to it and just delish dust delish i'm a big fan of the glen scotius when the society rolls those out i'll I'll get them any chance they roll them out all right boys let's get back into some tv uh and what have you been uh uh inhaling or what have you actually inhaled so i went back and i watched a couple shows that i kind of neglected for a long time so i went back and watched the nick and i watched both seasons of that and that was probably maybe a month and a half ago that was really good mike you had seen the first season didn't you yeah, yeah, I did. And and he's just a really good actor. He is. I like Clive Owen. Jumping ahead, a third one is coming. A third season is I on. I believe um, so, yes. It is, it is. And I think, who's taking it over? Is it Barry Jenkins? I think he's taking over the show for... And he's doing the show on Amazon right now. Uh, the Underground Railroad. Oh, that's just coming right, out. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah I, I just saw the previews for that. Which yeah. I think he's doing that, and it sounds really good. I just heard a little discussion about that. It sounds interesting, so I may have to check that out. But yeah, I really, really liked the Nick. Yeah, it, it was interesting because like when it first came out, I tried to watch it, and I think I was a less patient viewer then. I think I've got some motivation now to kind of be a little more patient and see where these things go, thanks to you know what we're doing here. So I kind of give it a little bit more, you know. Like and if I get tired and I fall asleep, I try to go back and just trying to get into it. But it, it was very good. It was it was really well shot the stories were great the acting was fantastic it was a great cast you know between clive owen and um what's her name eve Houston. eve Houston, bono's daughter yeah yep. she was very good uh rylance i can't think of her first name but she was also in perry mason andre holland it was a great cast it was a really really good show you know it had some humor and it's funny because like when you really look at it, what they were doing in medicine and all the crazy experimentation and you look at it now it's like oh my god i can't even imagine now it's amazing yeah. anyone lived. I know. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not sense. sure they did. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> it's just wacky that that was the that was the way it was. Just investigating infectious diseases. Mm-hmm. How did the investigators not catch it and spread it around? Um, today, right. the investigations are done with like hazmat suits on, and no one's wearing gloves, and no one's wearing masks, and everything's open air in surgery. It, it was really. Actually, what was interesting was with all the stuff that's been going on the last year and a half, there was the whole big part of the story that was devoted to that was devoted to the contact tracing. Yeah, to Typhoid Mary and trying to figure out who that was. It was fascinating watching that. Now, that was really cool the way they it did was it really cool. Um, you know, I mean, because you didn't have like you couldn't get someone's mobile phone records and find out where they were. No, you know, and, you had to was, ask everybody, you know, verbally, what did you eat? Uh-huh. Where were you? Blah blah blah. Which is still going on today, but right. Um, 
very more, much more uh, unsophisticated, I guess you'd say, for being 100 plus years ago. Um, mm-hmm. I watched this show when it first came out. I remember not having Cinemax. We only had HBO. And it was one of those free Cinemax weekends because I think HBO owned Cinemax, right, back then. Right. And uh, right. it was one of those free weekends. You could watch Cinemax for a whole weekend. And that had just come out, I think. And you and I watched like four episodes or whatever. And, I, wow, this is great. And then the weekend was over. And I'll never see this again because Cinemax is not on my tier on our cable. And luckily right. it came back and I'm, I, I, I swallowed it up. It was great. And I, I, not having, I, I started from the beginning too because I couldn't remember it all. Um, it, it's just well done. It. And I kept wondering, how did, where do they do the sets? I mean, how do they recreate old New York like that? It was just amazing. I, I don't know. I mean, the only, I guess they do, what was that, Silver Cup? Is that the studio in Brooklyn? Yeah. I imagine they did a yeah, lot I of Yeah, I guess that's there. where they're doing everything. Yeah. Everything scaled buildings. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was good. I really, really liked it. It was, it was yeah. really good. And I'm excited that there's going to be a third season because Me I too. guess Andre Holland comes back. Because I mean, I would think they can bring back just about everybody. Well, yeah, except, except Clive, Owen. Clive Owen. Yeah, yeah. Right. What else you got? Uh, I watched that. I did a rewatch of Banshee. Uh, I want to do that. I, I went back to the beginning and I, and I rewatched the whole show, and it was it was interesting to watch it because it was like I was watching it for the first time. You know, because there was a lot of stuff I didn't remember. Like you, we've we've all seen it, right? Or most of it? Yeah, yeah. I saw like yeah. three. Se- well, that's my problem. I don't remember where I stopped watching. Yeah, and it's either okay. season three or four. How many are there? Five seasons? There's four. Oh, there's four okay. seasons, and it's interesting because I remember not really liking the fourth season, but then I went back and I liked it better this time around. Yeah. But then the other season that I thought was good, I kind of went back and it's like, oh, it was it got a little tedious. You watched the entire season, the entire show, the first time around. I caught up on it on, um, I think it was on Prime for a while. So I caught up there, and then I watched it. I watched the last season while it was actually going on. Yeah. Because it was actually a big recommendation during one of our bottle shares, Mike. Yeah. I remember, like, Big Bill and, uh, and yeah, Rick Bill were going and back and forth talking yeah. about it. Like, oh, this is the greatest show ever. So then I went back and watched it, and it was good. It was a lot of fun. You know, there's um, not enough Amish crime novel shows. I think. Oh, my God. The, 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 the He's great. I, I just, oh, I think it's Ulrich Thompson. Yeah. He's the name of the actor. Yeah. He is just so good on the yep. show. He's just really good. And Anthony Starr, at first I thought he was kind of like so so, but this time he's really good. He's the lead? Yes. He was the guy in The Boys. He was Homelander in The Boys. Right. That just makes no sense to me at all. Yeah. I was blown away when you said that because I remember liking him. I thought he was a really good actor, but it never occurred to me that was who that was. Ah, oh, it was great. And everybody. I mean, it's like, it's the kind of show, really, don't piss anybody off because everyone can kill you six different ways. <laughs> At a minimum. It, it's just crazy. And, and, and they will. Yes. Is it still on Amazon Prime? Is that where you uh, watch No, it? no, no. Now it's, on, now it's all part of the, uh, the future sponsor, HBO Max. Oh. I would have watched in the wrong place then. Okay. Or tried to because watch Because I think, I think HBO Max is now bringing in all the old Cinemax shows. Because that's how I got to watch The Nick again. Oh, uh, got it. And they actually brought The Nick back and Banshee around the same time. So now they're, now they're actually, now they're finally, the multiverse is connecting. The HBO Cinemax multiverse. Is it's all one big story. Yep. I'm telling you. Yep. Uh, I, lo- I thought Banshee was like a nice modern follow up to watching Deadwood. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's- With like all the plots and the scheming and the conniving uh-huh. yeah. in, in the Wild West. And then they kind of like, hey, let's do it in, in a different sort of setting, but make it more modern. Yeah. yeah. And it was just because that ended and you kind of had a, nothing to watch in terms of like a gritty kind of show like that. Mm-hmm. And then that popped up. It was, oh, that's a really good show. It was 100% pure pulp. Over the top, ridiculous. I mean, there's just one fight scene where the guy, like, rips this woman's throat out. I was like, oh, my God. Literally ripped her throat out. <laughs> Literally. But, you know, it was interesting, though. Like, you know, there was the two lead characters. There was uh, Ivana Milicevic. I can't remember. I think she was Carrie slash Anna. She's the uh, wife. His wife. Well, no, no. They were, they were like, boyfriend-girlfriend uh, before he went right. to prison. Because the story is, like, you know, they were, like, they were um, thieves, whatever they were. They would steal anything. Uh, they master thieves. Would that, would that what they would call them? Sure. So they're master thieves. They get set up. They're working for her father, who's like head of the, I don't know, is he Serbian or Russian mob or Ukrainian, something like that, something Eastern European. But of course, they can't tell the father that they're seeing each other. And there's like the one big heist. They're going to rob this like diamond uh, exchange or whatever it is in, in North Jersey. And he gets set up. He goes to jail 15 years. She disappears. But they were never married. 
But then when he goes to find her, I thought for some reason that they really were just like, because she gets married and has kids. I thought they were hooking up a lot more, but they only did once hmm. the whole time. And I, th- and I I was like, I don't remember it this way. So it was kind of neat to watch it again. Just all the different bits and pieces. It's on my list. Yeah, and, the, the, and the English actor that plays um, her father. Oh, Ben Cross. He's ben really, Cross. really diabolical. Oh, he's, he's great. Really, he's, just, he's just really good. Where he's uh, he goes from chariots of fire to being the Ukrainian bad guy, <laughs> which is just like wow, this is you got you've got some range. It's pretty good. What else you got, Angie? Anything else? Uh, okay, so I did Banshee. Um, I we briefly touched upon another round during the Rum Show with um, Matt Mickelson, the Danish film that I think yeah. won Best Foreign Film. It did. Wow, that was interesting. That was actually really good. It was really, really good. It was really strange. It was, I, I call it a midlife crisis movie. And I think a lot of people have <laughs> called it a midlife crisis movie. Because he's like a teacher at a high school. And he's in a rut. You know, he was very inspired. And he was a great teacher. But things just aren't going great. You know, the marriage is not going well. The teaching isn't going well. So him and his other three teachers that he's good friends with, one guy comes up with, there's apparently a theory out there that I think humans are supposed to be like 0.05% blood alcohol content yeah that's what that's that will be our equilibrium that's where we're at like peak right. everything you know peak creativity peak inspiration the whole bit so they all kind of undertake this experiment and things go off the rails they go way 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 beyond the 0.05 and it, it, it was really good it was really really good i would, <clears throat> I, would rec- I recommend giving it a try when you say give it a try you mean watching the movie right. or keeping our blood alcohol <laughs> the actual level experiment point Oh, fuck, because I'm, I'm willing to do either one. I just wasn't sure I, what direction I you think were, we should do both. It. I think that's good. And it, and it was interesting because they're like, you have to start in the, in the beginning of the day, but you have to stop drinking by eight. So you kind of have to have like a drink an hour basically to maintain that 0.05 throughout the day. I think we're in. I'm in. I'm totally in. We'll start with this podcast and go on. Yes. And then let me see what else I watched. Uh, oh, I think you watched The Investigation, didn't you, Aaron? I did. Yes. Have you seen this, Mike? No, but I, I know the story. Because the guy's like uh, the Danish Elon Musk, and he's like a, completely around the bend, and a journalist dies, right? Yes. Yeah. He builds a submarine, yeah. and this journalist goes to interview him. And it wasn't, I don't think, uh, at least from the, from the story, it just sounds like she was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Because he tried to lure some people onto the submarine, and it just happened to be her, and yeah. whatever he did, for whatever reason, he killed her. Uh, but it was just, it was really, it was a really interesting show, because, you know, most cop shows, it starts off with... You know, you get the, you see the crime, you see what happens, you see the victim, you see the perp. Yep. You see all that. You don't see any of that with this. It yep. just opens with the investigation. You know, it starts with the cops. It starts with the what is he the what do you call it district attorney? I guess if, is that what you would call it in, in Denmark? Yeah, it's the guy who's prosecuting the case. Yeah, but it was it was really interesting because I, you never see it from that side. You know, like you never see any of the possible victims. It's just interviews and all the tedium that's involved with like trying a criminal case. You know, and, and the, the district attorney comes in all the time. He's like, look, we need evidence. You know, we have to prove this beyond a reasonable doubt. And we don't have enough to do this. I could hold him. But, you know, we have to build the case if you want to really try this guy and convict him. And it's just all the tedium. Finding the body. I mean, the guy, I think, he murdered her on the submarine, cut her up into pieces, and then sailed around. That Was it the North Sea? Is it not the uh, North Sea? That's, it's it's uh, some body of water the off Baltics. the coast. Yeah. Whatever it is. Uh, not the Baltics. Whatever whatever that is. Body of water between Denmark, Norway, Sweden, all up there. And he's, he randomly dumped the body all over the place. And, and then they bring in, like, Navy divers right. for Denmark. And I think they were, what, they were diving for, like, three months? Yeah. Four months and then, to find and the then they bring a, and they get the idea to bring a dog in, dogs in from uh, Sweden to, oh, uh, was crazy. to see if they could sm- – because they've done training in Sweden where you can actually smell – uh, gases that uh, escape from underwater. Um, right, right. That was really interesting too. That was mm-hmm. I'm you know and it's all and this is fairly factual, right? It's a. I think they said it was it was incredibly detailed. They went through all the case files and they did this like this was 
this was by the book. And Aaron, didn't you say they went to like the weather guy or the tide guy, yes, tidal they guy, go to or a tide, something? Well, because, because they kind of, wherever they were looking, they were looking in the wrong correct. spot, and he was able to tell them, "No, move the boats here." It had because to do that's where it should be by with now the, or the, right? the the currents and the warm water right. versus the cold right. water, and where right. this kind of stuff, where the gases could have right. been. Uh, it, and, and yeah, they're yeah. getting mad because the dogs can't find the, the scent. And right. well, we move the boat. Maybe the dogs can find the scent. Yeah, move the dog. Move to find uh, it, it was the weird thing about it was like when I first heard about it, you know, you, you it sounds like it's going to be like, you know, this is really boring, you know, but because yeah, they were like you said about so the, the I think the dogs could smell the, the off gassing of the bodies. Is that what it was? Yeah. Like as the body's decaying and all that kind of stuff. At first, they thought it was the wind that was driving it. So the dog would smell it here. And they were like, all right, well, the wind's going 15 miles an hour coming from the northeast. Maybe they're going to dive over there. But then, like you said, they, they found out that it actually had to do more with the current than anything else. Right. So, you know, the dog could smell it like three miles away from where it was. And they had to just kind of map it out where it was. And, and they eventually found the body. They found everything. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it was crazy. And there was a lot of stuff going to the victim's parents, you know, talking with them because they're like, all right, you know, what happened here? And, and who and is the, the lead- mom of that of the victim, the I actress? Don't I don't know. Who she is Anakin Skywalker's mother. Oh really? Yep. She she plays Anakin Skywalker's mother in uh, Phantom Menace. Well, sure, Phantom Menace. Yeah, one of those. In, in one and two. Yeah, yeah, one and two. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, they were good. I I really liked the guy who played the lead detective too. If you would have told me he was an actual like he really really took this. Role. He seemed like a cop. Yeah, he had the you know he just had that very demeanor, matter and of fact, you screwing know, up just, his uh his his own his marriage and because he's so. Obsessed Sucked over the into case. it. Obsessed, yeah, totally. Right, right. I that enjoyed really that good. one too. Yep. Now, now, was this in? Uh, was this all subtitled? Yes. Yeah. Well, you could watch subtitled, it either, yeah. but yeah, we watched it in Dan. I watched it in Danish. Yeah, so did I. Yep. No, I just meant that it wasn't dubbed because you know no. a lot of people don't like dubbing. They'd rather watch no. subtitles. Yeah, so. the, the dubbing is just terrible in most cases. Yeah. I haven't seen anything that's done that's dubbed yeah. well. It fit well in it, with my whole uh, Icelandic TV uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> motif that I've been on. <laughs> My Scandinavian motif. Did, did you drink some, tour. some Akavit and maybe have a little yeah. bit of uh, cured salmon while you're watching the show? Correct, yes. yes. Some mm. smoked fish. For me, that Delicious. started because of Mr. Uh, Greg Swartz and and, and uh, Trapped the, yeah. the, oh, on yeah, Amazon right. Prime. Did that's that, how yeah. I started on this this Norwegian holiday or whatever the hell it is. And, and not to interrupt you, Ange, but Trapped on it was a Amazon, Amazon Prime was spectacular. In in a, in a similar way, um, you were I didn't know this that was that this existed, but you said it, Ange, was that there's a uh, what, Nordic noir is that what that's called? That's a thing. Yeah, it's a it's thing. Really I had thing. no idea. It's a thing. So I got sucked into the Nordic noir with uh, Trapped and from Greg's uh, recommendation, and it's two seasons. Uh, okay. Small town in uh, amongst the frozen volcanoes. It was in Iceland, right? It's in Iceland, and but it wasn't Reykjavik. It was like up on the northern coast, or whatever. It's a small little town in a bay, mm-hmm. and someone uh, a cruise ship is coming in. It get the, this little town gets cruise ships, and um, a, a piece of a torso of a body pops up in the bay. Cops I find hate when it. That happens. I know, and this our our burly cop has to investigate. And they have to, they think that there's some connection with the cruise ship coming in. And so they make the cruise ship stay in town and can't leave. And then the weather turns and it's a complete blizzard. So everyone is literally trapped in this little town, in this little bay, while this uh-huh. investigation is going on. And it's, it, it's convoluted. It connects families and Chinese trying to buy up this this little town for other you know real estate purposes blah blah blah. So this is a bigger story, but it's it's amazing that the it's how they film this stuff. If it's real snow and it's real blizzardy, it's amazing. It looks like they're really filming in like the, you know eight foot of high snow drifts and and it's just amazingly gorgeous. Um, you know a lot of white, a lot of white capped scenes. And on that same uh, Icelandic or Scandinavian thing, I, I watched another one, a uh, Swedish one uh, called Bear Town on um, HBO Max. 
And uh, <laughs> it's about another small little town in the middle of nowhere. And an ex-hockey player comes back to his hometown to uh, coach the, the, the team there in this town. It's a, a youth team that's, you know, teenagers, basically, high schoolers. And he comes back to much fanfare. And, of course, he's got a pass there. And he's with his wife and two kids, a uh, teen daughter. And his daughter gets raped by the star player on the team. So there's an investigation about how that it's a he said, he said, she said kind of story, uh, this girl and this kid. And, um, and of course the hockey team doing great with this new coach, but, the, but the coach, uh, is, is in this tough position because his daughter is raped allegedly by this kid. It's, it's harrowing. It's really harrowing. And, and, and there's a lot of, a lot of snow in that one, a lot of snow in that show too. And a lot mm. of, and, and the hockey stuff, for our hockey fans out there, the hockey on ice with these kids, and they're basically teenagers, is amazing. It's just fantastic. It's the best. I mean, it's not like watching the Mighty Ducks. Let's just say that. It's really excellent. It's well, hmm. well done. And then I've read a few articles about how they really try to make the, the actual on ice um, footage real hockey. And it was. It was really good. So, trapped on. Uh, I'm sorry, Bear Town on HBO Max. Def- mm. Definitely a, a, a keeper. Worth a shot. Yep, worth a shot. Okay. Should we uh, talk about alcohol for a minute? Anybody pouring yeah. anything new? No, no. I'm keeping the keeping right. keeping the faith. Keeping the well, faith. You know, I'm debating. You know, I think I'm going to try. We reviewed an Irish whiskey a little while ago called the Dubliner. Oh yeah, and I saw I, that. I, I was kind of lukewarm on it. I mean, I thought it was okay. It wasn't anything really special. But, I, you know, sometimes you just need to revisit it. I moved on to the um, another Glen Scotia that this one, uh, Bozzy, helped, I think, uh, bring in. This is the um, the uh, Campbelltown Malts uh, just, uh, Festival bottling. Hmm. So yes. this is a special one. This one you'd have to go to the to Campbelltown to get. Right. What? I'm in. Yeah, really. Bye. You in? And what what what's it bottled at? You know that didn't. I don't have that in front of me, and I, it's not on the label on the little sample. I want to say it was, it was with a five, but I don't remember what. Yep. Yeah, uh, we like five. It's really good. Nice. This really one's good. with a four. Just a four. Just a four. Just a forty percent. But you know, I didn't care. I mean, it was okay. I think Mike, you had the same kind of impression, right? It wasn't anything really special. Yeah, I think we both thought the same thing. If they bottled it at a higher ABV, it'd probably be a little bit better. Maybe. Well, maybe more interesting anyway. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, when we do reviews, it's it's generally, we're going in cold. It's not like yeah. we've tried it before. It's rare that we do something we've actually tried because, you know, why bother? Um, so, you know, and first impressions, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. But I've gone back to some stuff, and I've, I've enjoyed it more. So hopefully that'll happen with yeah. us. This is just, there was the glug glug. It's a good, what? it's a good There was glug a glug glug. glug. All right, let's hop back into it. Mm. Okay. What you got, Ange? What have you right, been watching? Was... What did you watch? Okay, I just finished My Brilliant Friend on HBO. All four seasons? Rec- or three seasons? Two. There's only two so far. No. Is that right? There's only two. There's, there's going to be, I think, a third. I think it was a four-part book. Yeah. What's the name of the, what's the, name of the writer? Something Ferrara? Ferrante? Yeah, that's not no. her real name. She's, that's a, her nom de plume. She's, she's anonymous. Oh, okay. All right. But um, it, it, it was an interesting show. I know you recommended it a couple years ago when it came out because you yep. watched it with the girls. I, well, I tried to watch it with my daughter who loves Italian, but she never really got into it. But I, So I watched it. Um, I loved it. I thought it was just it was, gritty and and Oh, my God, depth, was it gritty. Deep. And uh, that's it. Is it Naples? Right? Yes. It's and in Naples. It's in Naples. And it's um, a slice of that part of the world of that era that I'm not that familiar with. You know, it feels, oh, it should be very romantic, right? It should be very, but it wasn't. You would it's, think. Uh, I thought, no, not at all. It no. was just, oh my God, everybody's horrible. It's very, I assume, realistic in a lot of ways, right? This, I think this is this woman. Everybody's woman's, horrible. The, the author <laughs> my, of the book. My has, people are the worst. They oh. are the worst. I don't, why do you have a podcast? I can't figure that out. I don't know. I don't know. I was just enamored by, on, on so many levels, you've got this young 
I don't know how many episodes of it when the, when the, the two uh, it characters. It was 10 and 10. It was 20 episodes. Oh, with the young girls? Uh, oh, with the young girls. I think a it was couple. only two. two or, I think yeah. it was just two or three. And that was great to set this whole story up about uh-huh. their lives and how they are you know, become these best friends. And, and then as they grow through adolescence and uh, young womanhood um, and moving, trying to get out of this shitty world that they're living in oh my in. god get the hell out of there and and jesus they for whatever reason you, they can't right they can and they can't they're already they're all there's always one foot still back in the in hometown yeah. um, well you know funny not funny i t- I, I was watching it and you know the boys like to joke like oh abuse abuse they like to yell dad get away they just they just like to, they like to bust my chops I'm like, look, kids, you don't know abuse. You need to watch like the first two episodes of this show. <laughs> the, 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 girls, the girl wanted to go to middle school because uh, it was like, you know, like my parents. My mom, I think, only went to like third grade. My dad finished eighth grade. So it was apparently a big deal. You had to take a test to move up because it was so impoverished. I mean, this was just like a really, really poor part. of Southern Italy was, was not, you know, not wealthy at all. You know, it was like being in, I don't know, the sticks here, like being in the Ozarks or wherever you know and it's it was post-war it was like it yeah, was early it's 50s post-war. mid 50s yep so i mean it was like you know it, and it's interesting to watch a show evolve over the years like first there's like maybe one or two cars you know by the time you get to the end of the second season the cars are everywhere yeah so you know things are just starting to grow but so the one girl she just wanted and she was really smart the one girl basically taught herself how to read right was it the uh, lilu the, yeah, the dark haired the, the yep. dark haired girl the one who looked more Sicilian than you know than yep. the other girl who looked the model more northern like. Italian. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but she basically taught herself how to read it. She was really smart. You know, she showed up all the kids. She was like, I think six or seven. She knew her math. She knew her reading. She knew her grammar. Everything, and she just wanted to go to the next level. And her parents were like, absolutely not. This is not happening. And the dad's like, you're not better than me. Takes the kid, literally throws the kid out the window. Now, thankfully, it was the first floor window. <laughs> because yeah. otherwise it was only the first floor but i was like you know the, the kids the parents threw the girl out the window okay so you want to talk abuse watch this show this is abuse yeah. um and, and then the other girl had to really kick and scream to to advance in her career because they were both really smart yeah. it's interesting that that show did not it got a lot of praise or has gotten a lot of praise but you don't hear much about it. it. When it first came out, you did, but it sort of mm-hmm. got buried by HBO. Um, yeah. I don't maybe not by HBO. Maybe it just wasn't popular. I was sucked into it immediately. It was one of those must-see shows for me. Watching it every week, but both seasons, um, and I can't wait for another one. It is just so well written in Italian, and I'm watching it in Italian. <laughs> um, yeah. it, it's hard to watch at times. You really want these two girls to succeed in life and get away from the darkness that they're living in you don't know if they're ever going to get there yep you just don't know mike mike what's your line to 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 your neapolitan better half how am i your happily happily ever after yeah (laughs) yeah i don't know how these men survived i really don't because they were just awful one guy was worse than the next but absolutely but you but you can argue that that's that was the norm Oh right. yeah, no, absolutely. Right. That's the absolutely. norm. And how did women survive is really the question. Have, so I should have Wendy watch this to appreciate exactly. Me more, is exactly. This is right. This is okay. this should you... be shown on Father's Day to all the women out there. <laughs> That's right. This is what. This is look at, look at how lucky you are. Yeah, it could be. It could be worse. Yes. <laughs> it could always it could be, worse. be worse. I mean, it's bad, but it could be worse. Yeah, it was it was it was beautifully shot. I mean, it was beautiful. The scenes in Ischia when they when the girl goes away for the summer, the two yeah. times. Oh my God, it's so pretty. I mean, it's just really really beautiful to watch. I but think I, I think I said to you uh, that it had that vibe of a of a sh- of a movie made of that era. Yeah. Right. It's so good. if you didn't know that it was made in twenty twenty or twenty eighteen mm-hmm. or twenty nineteen. Oh man, this is a, this is an amazing Italian movie from 1962. Uh-huh. It's amazing, and yeah, it's it, it's shot that way in, in a lot of ways uh, with you know, but it, production. It was skills. almost at certain times it was almost like a horror movie though, because you just have, always had that feeling yeah. that it's things dark. are going to turn. Yeah, you know, you just you know every minute it's like oh this guy's great, this guy's wonderful, oh he's such a nice man, he's so charming, and then the next thing you know he's like you know this, this guy's like well, the one father of the the kid she liked, he liked that guy Nino. Yeah. 
the really tall, thin kid who was, mm-hmm. I guess, you know, intellectual and all this stuff. And the father was a writer. And, you know, the father's like molesting this girl. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? My God. This it, was just absolutely. It feels like a, a ni- 1950s, 60s uh, Italian pulp novel turned into a, a beautiful movie. And it, yeah. a dark movie. But it's it's really well done. It's really it well is. done. It, it was it was really good. Did did you watch um, Made for Love? Made for Love. Which it was, was like that? HBO Max with. Uh, oh, was that the one with Kristen Malati? Yes. No, I didn't. I tried to watch the first episode. And I, I was tired. It was again. I, I lacked my patience on that one. I recommend going back to it. Okay. One, Kristen Malati. Wow, she's a she's a hometown girl, right? She is she. She's the mo- she's the mother. Yeah, she went to uh, she went to our high, the high school with our kids. She what? Went to drama program. Get out of town! Ta- yeah. how, how is she not on the podcast? I don't know. We got to get her. I got to oh talk to her. I don't know if she still lives here. No, but mom oh. and dad may. Maybe your mom and dad do. Really, I did not know this. It's a really interesting take on Google and. Uh, Apple and putting things in your body to kind of watch you and and the, the high techness of it and and she's trying to escape this craziness of her husband who's like the you know Elon Musk of or whatever of of his, his little corporation that has all these magical things that they do you know she's like she's like Aya Cash okay she is uh, hypnotic on screen. Yeah. You know, she and and she's a great. I think, like Aya Cash, she's a great comedic actress, uh-huh. and then can get very very serious. She was in Palm Springs, right? Yeah, she was great. I thought she was really good in Palm Springs. Well, you know what it is? That's the Cherry Hill East drama training. <sighs> it, it's it's <laughs> yeah, talked about in many many drama books on it drama. Is. It is. Well, you know, girl, she she won a Tony, didn't she? She was nominated. She won a Grammy. Oh, she oh, she, she won a Grammy. Grammy. She, she sings. She won a Grammy. She sings. What? Yeah, she, yeah, because she did. She was in the musical. She was in once. In the right? musical once. She was in once. We talked about that on the uh, on the Irish episode on the St. Paddy St. Paddy's Day yes. episode. She was she, great. I really, I, I I highly recommend it. It was all right. It was I'll fun. Go, I'll go back to it. Yeah, it was fun. What else you I'll got? Go back to it. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, let's see, my brilliant friend. Uh, uh, who's watching Mayor of Easttown? Well, we're that's a, let's come back to that because that's a, that, that's when we're watching. Let's we'll just do ones we watched. We'll come back to that. Did you see the big the big hubbub with that? With oh, the SNL skit? That was hysterical. Where where they went over the top of the accent. Oh, it was were great. Complaining about, oh, it's disgraceful. The dirter murder. Murder my dirter. Oh, it was great. That now, was... Uh, not that we're going to talk too much about it, but in this general area, the big thing, the convenience stores were all Wawa's. Right. Wawa. And they had a big article where they're interviewing her about coming here and filming on location and everything. And they said, well, what did you think? And she said, well, the one guy knew about Wawa. And got this monstrous sandwich. I don't know what it was. And she's like, sandwich. I mean, I mean, like a grinder. I mean, it's a hoagie. She got. No, he got it's a, not hoagie. a hoagie. It's a hoagie. <laughs> a hoagie. It's a hoagie. But it's so funny. She's trying to fit in. Did you guys get through, uh, or did you watch uh, Men and Celts the whole way? No, I gave up. You gave up. I gave up. I, you know what? I just forgot about it. And and it's just it's like an advertisement for for Outlander the whole time. Yeah, it, it was. was too short. You know, they, they they go into this whole thing. They go to this fabulous place, and they rush through it. They didn't spend enough time with any of the stuff. So I was like, ah, eh, this is kind I agree. of this isn't. My wife and I are watching. It's hard not to watch things on Scotland for us. It's just really yeah, hard not no, to I watch. Understand. And yeah. uh, and there's a fair amount of whiskey in it. And uh, yes, you're right. It's all very staged, and uh, it's a bit more than a bit hokey. Um, and I I think I read that they're. There's a second season coming, and sure, I've seen a couple of reviews that kind of are similar to what we've talked about. It 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 lacks the spontaneity. It's devised in a strange way. It's um, it needs one location definitely for for an episode instead of this you know bouncing around the entire country and go a little deeper. It wants to go deeper and then doesn't. It's like they're afraid right. to go yeah. all the way, and. I think they think the people are going to lose interest. It's the Sam Hewing guy. Him and his the the other actor, McTavish. Yeah, McTavish. McTavish. Yeah. They're really great together. They do they definitely have a great camaraderie on screen, and it feels like a lot of it's not actually scripted. 
But then there are times it feels like it's that they don't want to let them let them go. Just let them right. go. Yeah. Maybe then they get nothing done. <laughs> I suppose there'd be a lot of editing. And that's okay, yeah. though. But well, what's wrong with no, that? No, I, I agree. Mean, yeah, let it, let it, them it loose. Sh- they should let them loose. Just and, see where the show goes. And They're already in Scotland. I mean, you know. Yeah, my, my better half has forbid me to watch it. Why? Why? Until the next season of Outlander's out. Because uh, she's a big fan of binge watching, uh-huh. where she wants to watch everything all at once. Yeah. We'll have both of them. We can watch them all at once, and then watch the other one all at once. It'll, yeah. I'll get my whole fix in all at once. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, it's that, funny. It Speaking of weird, Bimwa. It was very strange how they connected uh, or it made it somewhat of a um, an advertisement for the sh- for the Outlander. It was It's like that, it's like we already subscri- Obviously, we already subscribed to the channel. We you know, yeah, we, we know who you are. If you, if, if you're watching yeah. Men and Kilts, you're probably watching Outlander. So yeah. just let Men and Kilts be Men and Kilts. Does the Outlander need more viewers? No, oh, let it be its own thing. Yeah, I didn't understand. It, I just, it was weird. I I wanted to like it. I really did. I was really excited for it. But it, it just disappointed me, and it's like, yeah, there's other things to watch. So, um, what else is on your list? What else you got? Anything else? I got a few. Uh, okay, so we're gonna hold off on Mayor of Easttown, right? Yeah, we'll come back. Yeah. What I started watching this week because there's been a lot of buzz about it, and we saw, we got together with our buddy Sam and and Mark and Whiskey Cast Mark Gillespie the other night, and he was really talking up for all mankind on Apple Plus. Yeah. So I oh, watched yeah. the first three episodes. It is really, really good. And I'm not one for the space stuff, but I think I like this because it's it's science and it's fiction, but it's not science fiction, you know? So because it's it's more reality based, it's really that's yeah, like science fact, right? Yeah, it's it's alternative science fact. You know, this is all things that happened or could have happened, and I think they used a lot of real characters. You know, they talk about a lot of real people. Like there's a whole thing, and it's interesting the way they're doing it because it's an alternative reality. What's uh, what channel is that on? Or what this is on service? Apple Plus. Oh right, so this is is that this is in the second season though, right? Yeah, you but know? I'm watching the first. I didn't watch the yeah, second. Yeah, I saw. I, I didn't know about season. it until I saw the ads for the second first season. It's really well done. It's for the really second cool. season. So it's like an alternative reality. It's right around the space program, and you know, there's the whole space race between the Russians and the U.S. to whoever gets to the moon first. And the Russians get there first. And that's that's how the show kicks off. And everyone's pissed off. You know, Nixon's president, he's pissed off. He's like, how? How did they beat us? How did they beat us? And now it's now it's the whole, it's like an arms race to get to, you know, build a space station, base station on the moon and all this crazy stuff. It, it's really good. So far, I'm, I'm into it. And apparently it gets better as it goes. So I'm excited to keep going. So that's a watching show. That's a, you're, you're you're still in the middle of that one. I'm actively watching it. I, Anything else in the uh, past that you've gotten gotten through already? Uh, no, I think that's about it. From what I remember, that's okay. That, I, mean, I think that's I think that's plenty. I mean, you figure Banshee was like forty episodes. <laughs> I got I got <laughs> a Nick couple. Was Twenty episodes. I got a couple that uh-huh. I watched. Um, maybe I'll start with a couple fun odd ones. A um, couple of animated shows, both on Netflix. Okay. One was called The Great Pretender. Interesting animated show that is like uh, Ocean's Eleven. But okay. there's three seasons? Uh, maybe it's two seasons, but there's seasons within the season. Like there's arcs within the seasons. It's about a, uh, a group of... Common. And they... It's a guy... I, think his, I can't remember his name. He's the leader. And he's got two women that... Are, are in the group and they bring in a, a, a fourth person who is this Japanese kid who was like a small timer in Japan. And the first episode is all in Los Angeles. And I mean, it's Los Angeles to a T. The colors and the way it's uh, animated is just spectacular. The opening credits, the opening scene is like right out of um, the Stewarder show. Catch me if you can. Oh, the uh, like catch me like get, like catch me if you can. That that's it's it, it could be a, one of those kinds of shows. The way it's presented, mm-hmm. very good, and it's um it's really fun. Um, another little show, and it's only like six episodes. It's on Netflix, and it's called City of Ghosts. And it's mm-hmm. all done in Los Angeles, and each episode, it's these four little kids, five little kids, and they're they're like. You know, not middle schoolers or younger, and they have they search for ghosts. Each episode looks at 
a very unique part of Los Angeles, whether it's um, uh, an Asian restaurant in uh, East L.A. And who's it's haunted by some ghost. And these kids are the ghost hunters. And all the ghosts are fine. They're not like scary ghosts. They're just these ghosts have a reason why they're there and they talk to you and the ghosts and they interview the ghosts. And why is the ghost here? Oh, because my grandfather was he used to own the same building and he he had a restaurant here at the same time in the 1950s. And he was put in a Japanese internment camp or something. It, it is an amazing look at Los Angeles um, with his little kids. So it's it's great for little kids to watch and learn about, you know, diversity and and uh, cultural appropriation and and the the buzzword topics of the day, and it's great for uh, adults too. It's hmm. very very good. Um, huh. So, City of Ghosts on Netflix. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. A couple other ones that I I got through was season three of Schnitzel on oh, okay. on Netflix. Um, it is one of the best written shows about family ever. It's it's just that good. And they got the band back together after like three years. They, the show was pretty much done, but it got this resurgence oh, really? on Netflix, and they got them to come back for season three. And I think there's talk of season four coming, too. Now that it's been a hot commodity, it's probably going to get a fourth season at some point. Huh, interesting. I haven't yep. checked this one out. Uh, and two other ones I want to touch on uh, real My quick. My God, don't you have a job? Don't you no. work? Hey, we haven't talked for a long time, man. This has been all, it's forever. That's true. Right? It's been a while. Um, we might have we might have mentioned this one with CB Strike on HBO. It's with Tom Burke and Holiday Granger, and it's about a uh, um, detective, right? Detective he was like a, who he was a ex military and ex military gets his foot leg shot off, and he came from a. Uh, rock star family his mom was a model his dad was a, and she overdosed and he his dad is a like a gu- gu- guitar rock He's god a rock star, right? yes and uh he goes to oxford or somewhere and then he goes into the military goes to afghanistan gets injured comes back and he's all screwed up and he doesn't want any part of his you know family's money and he becomes a private eye and of course he's the private eye who has bills and doesn't have any money and can't get a job and or can't like get every any, other private eye totally and uh holiday granger comes in as a temp one day to to work for him and uh, she's in a strange relationship with her fiance and this is really what she wants to do this is her this is she wants to be a private eye and i think there's two seasons it's written it's based on uh, a set of novels from uh, oh, J.K. Rowling, right? J.K. Rowling, and she. But again, also another she, pseudonym. Yes. Not pseudonym. Right. Not, is it pseudonym or pet name? What do you want to call it? Pseudonym. Yeah, pseudonym. pseudonym nom de plume. If I knew that, I didn't know that going in. Um, I probably would have not looked at this thing, uh, but I, mm-hmm. I did not know that, and and I got hooked early. Tom Burke and Holly Granger have a nice relationship. They have a nice chemistry. Yeah, they're good together. Yeah, and it's the same, you know, you know, some horrid crime and screwed up detectives trying to figure out what happened, and very, mm-hmm. very British, <laughs> standard British. Yeah, I, I, I watched the first case with the three with the model. Yeah, so I watched the first three episodes, and it, it was pretty good. But, yeah, you know, other things came up, and you know, if I'm going to watch, if I have a choice between that and my brilliant friend, I watch my brilliant friend. Sure, that's a little, that's yeah. a little bit more, it's a little meatier. And one that I just finished on Netflix uh, because I, I needed more foreign language in my life Uh, this one is in (laughs) Spain and it's called um, The the Innocente which is The Innocente 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 how would we say in Spanish and it's about a a guy who um, when he's in his uh, 20s we got a guy is there a dame (laughs) there's no dame well there is games games he uh, he uh, accidentally gets in a fight at a party and pushes a guy who falls backward, hits his head, and dies. And hmm. so it's a goes on prison goes to prison for manslaughter. And the father of this kid that dies is just and then his, the mother. They're overwrought that this guy is you know, they lost their son and this guy goes to jail and he gets out at some point and he go and he becomes an attorney. 
and he seems like a good person. And he goes to work for this brother, and they have a law firm. And his brother dies, just has a heart attack or something. And so he has to take over the firm. And um, just by chance, there's another murder. The cops think he's the one that did it. And it's it's like all the other shows we've seen before where this there's this huge amount of intrigue going on around, lots of little stories. They're all interconnected. And there's a cop, a girl, who she's got some past, and she's going to try to figure this all out. And the higher-ups won't let her figure out because there's more going on that you're not allowed to know. And uh, it's really well done. And I think it's in, I think it's set in Madrid, I think. Or okay. let's say it's Madrid. Um, really good. And it's uh, trending on Netflix because it's pretty, pretty popular. So, nice. Yeah, so I just got through that one. And uh, those are my, uh, my currents, the, the, my ones I went through. So, uh, are you sure? Wow. There's one other one, but yeah, it, it's too weird. It's in Turkish. So. <laughs> it's in Turkish. <laughs> it was a, it was actually a Netflix one too. And I'll, I'll throw uh, it out. Ethos on Netflix. Turkish, amazing show. Like eight or ten characters, separate stories, all interconnected. Uh-huh. Highly recommend it. Huh. Ethos. E T H O S. Ethos. 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 Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Shall we uh, drink some more? I can always drink sure. more. I went back. I actually I, I kicked the Glen Rothis. Nice. Kicked. It's gone. Well done. It's finito. Hasta la vista, baby. What are you moving on to, Aaron? I am moving on to another Glen Scotia. Master's Distiller Edition. Oh. Uh, 57.3. Well, Another nice. one that was, uh, I think, helped. Got to this country by our friend Bozzi. Now, are these independent bottlings or are these actually from the are these distillery bottlings? These were all distillery bottlings. Okay. Yeah. And well, this was, uh, what's his, Ian McAllister? Is he, uh, he's, I think he's the master distiller at um, uh, Glen Scotia. He actually, he actually got this bottle for us. This is from Ian. Well, wait, Aaron, while, while you were doing the, the Glen Scotia tasting, did you try the Victoriana? Was that part of the tasting? It was. And I think I don't have that sample anymore. It was on Because I, I just I just saw that in one of the stores by us, and I almost bought it because it's very pretty. Yeah. But I wasn't sure <laughs> what it was as, as you know, a, a standard bottling or if that was a special one-off thing or something. I but I'd like to try it. I don't know if it's a one-off. I don't think it is. Um, yeah. I think it's an annual. Um, yeah. I don't recall. I don't remember seeing the bottle, actually. Was the bottle that interesting? I don't remember that. The, the label is kind of neat compared oh. to the, the regular... Glen Scotia is not that they're run of the mill, but right. it was a whiskey bottle yeah. where the Victoriana looked like it was a little more behind it. Ah, very cool. I like my pretty packaging. <laughs> so. Don't we all? Um, oh, oh got, speaking of yeah. pretty packaging. Yes. We've got the. Talking about um, me? No, wow. Well, hey. I'm hey, the prettiest Sarah. packaging you can get. Hello, hello Sarah. Hello. Now, hello. Did, did, hey did now. you see on Instagram I posted that bottle I got from. Um, it's the it's the what's it called? What's the celebrity rum, the silver ray. Yeah, the, 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 uh, my Silver-ray. God, that's a, just a really pretty box. It makes me want to get on a plane and go to like Costa Rica. You, you know, know, it's like a bright yellow, and it's got the toucan, it's got the trees. I like that. See, the same store that Victoriana was in, I saw the silver ray. How Which much store was this? And I was like, oh, that's pretty nice. Uh, total wine. Didn't you say that that? Oh, that r- that rum is like 150 bucks. Yeah, 150 bucks. Crazy. Jeez. But apparently, the guy that blended it is like this legendary rum guy who's huh. in Panama. I can't oh. remember his name right now. It'll all come out in the review. But anyway, beautiful bottle. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna wait. First, we have to pour out the first two inches of the bottle. <laughs> right. We got to throw that out because that's no good. That's all bad. Just throw that in my glass. Right. That, I'll take care of it. That's gotta go, and then we could drink. The good stuff's really. The good stuff's at the bottom of them. Yeah. Oh, you know what, Mike? By the way, when we review it, bring a saber. Because it looks like a champagne bottle, so we need so to we can, we can open it. We need to do the saber thing. We need to like. We need Fortunately, to I have a series of sabers. I'll bring them over. You can decide which excellent. one you want. Excellent, because you're you, much like the Turks, you're good with a knife. No, they're they're, they're the Nabla Dons. Ah, uh, it's even better than a knife. Did you guys see uh, talking about packaging that uh, Brook Lottie was going to is is trying to move away from the the tins? No. Yeah, so there uh, it was a, maybe a month ago that they announced they were that. they're going to try to go away from. T- you can actually opt out of the tin if you're ordering from them online. You don't have to get the tin. So uh, because it's you know it's another environmental. Like, 
It's environmental. Well, and, and it's extra weight. It's extra for shipping, weight for shipping, you know, and they have to make them. And you know, it's yeah. it. It makes sense. I mean, the, the overpackaging is crazy with yeah. a lot of this stuff, and mm-hmm. you know, the boxes are are insane. And uh, I think there's a bit of a uh, push in the industry to have less of a footprint. And uh, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I get it too. And and uh, some uniformity. Uh, I understand that the, some of that stuff is probably good for shipping, and it gets heavier, but yeah. protects the protects the bottle. Right. But still, right, yeah. uh, some of it gets insane. It just yeah. But you're probably also wrapping the tin in something because somebody doesn't want the tin dented. That's right. Right. So you're like, well, I got this tin to protect the bottle, but then I got to protect the tin, so I've really not reduced any of the packaging. And if I just put the bottle in the in those little air pillows, I'm just as good. I remember yeah. ordering a bottle of. Uh, from the Aaron Distillery, uh, Mockery Moor, which is their peated whiskey. And it, like, they do it every, they used to do it like once every couple of years, I think. Cast Strength came in a tin, and I had it shipped to New York to our friend Sarah. And I remember, I think she shipped it to me or she gave it to me when I was in New York one time. And I was so disappointed because they did, they packaged it wherever whoever shipped it. I don't remember what company I bought it from, and the the tin was totally dinged. Yeah. It was totally dinged, and I was so disappointed. Um, so it's one yeah, more I thing did, they got to deal with. Yeah, I had the same experience with the three ships, uh, the, the South African distillery. Mm-hmm. Where'd you get it from? Uh, where I got something from a master and malt, right, right. and it came with a bunch of other things, and everything came, and nothing was leaking, but the tin was dented. Uh-huh. And you're like, oh, it was a pretty tin. Mm. Yeah, it's dented. Yeah, you know, you're paying for it, right? You yeah. wanted to, mm. you know, there's there's pluses and minuses to it. But uh, yeah. I, yeah, you know, we we like the shiny, pretty thing, right? The the packaging, but there's a downside to it, and shipping is mm. one of them. So there are many downsides to you there, pretty shiny thing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I read an article uh, on Vulture, and I thought we might discuss this a bit. Um, it's about if you if you watch if you're on the Netflix, you see this thing on the net on your home screen about the what's trending and what yep. your top tens are, and uh, and when you get on there, you start kind of scrolling through to find something to watch, and inevitably, like myself, who you know at some point you do kind of catch up with all what you're watching and you want to find something new, you are scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Uh-huh. And there's this fatigue, decision fatigue. We all have that when we walk into a whiskey store or we walk into... Too many choices. You guys and, and your beer, when you walk into a, a beer uh, liquor store, it must be insane having all those choices. So Netflix is trying to figure out how to make that burden less so. And uh, this article on Vulture talks about this new... Uh, what Netflix is trying to do with this new uh, interface that they've got called Play Something. So before we talk about Play Something, let's talk a little bit about uh, that fatigue. Do you guys do you guys find yourself like, oh, oh my god, I'm bouncing between apps trying to find something to watch? It's just crazy. And and thank God for like you know either podcasts or things like Vulture or AV Club. I just go by the recommendations. If I hear that if there's good buzz on the show, then I start watching it. And on Netflix now, they have like the the passive, because you watched this show, right. here's eight other shows you might want to watch. And I'll just be like, okay, I'll just pick one of those rather than scroll through everything else. And with my barely opposable thumbs, working the remote's <laughs> dangerous anyway. Now, oh, I turned the TV off. What did I just you do? You just started making the popcorn. You just activated the microwave. Exactly. I ruined everything. You know, it's funny how they passively have the algorithm to say, because you watch this, you watch that. And I guess now it's more of a an active, because you watch this, we're going to make you watch this other show so you don't even have a choice. Because you're so fatigued from choices, you know, you got lost. You're down the rabbit hole again. Isn't it funny how when we were kids, you had like, you know, the three networks. Seven Four channels. stations. Right, you had seven <laughs> channels. And it was it's hard to find something to watch, right? Uh-huh. Yep. And then when HBO comes along, and all of a sudden the explosion of cable, and then your your basic cable was another 30, 40, 50 channels, and you can't find anything to watch. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and now we've, we're in this world of streaming where 
you've got this endless amount of channels with cable or whatever, and then you've got all these streaming services, and you can't find anything to watch. How how is that possible? And and yeah. it's it it really is fatiguing. It, yep. it can yeah. be. Yeah. It's it's. Really- I remember. When we first got married, we moved, you know, we moved to the suburbs and all that. And there was a little video store in the shopping center nearby. We would go in there to try to find what to watch. I swear, we'd walk around the store for an hour before we picked. Because it would be, you know, you, you rent four, you have them for five days. You know, we brought, we'd rent four movies and try to watch them. It would take us forever. And it's the same thing now. Now I just don't, I don't even have the exercise of walking around the video store. I'm just sitting on my couch trying to figure out what the hell to watch. Yeah. It's crazy. I scroll through HBO Max. I scroll through Prime. I, you know this, that, the other thing. So if if there's no buzz, I don't know what the, I don't know what yeah, I'm yeah. going to pick up next. Netflix is interesting because we all think of Netflix now as a streaming service, but we're mm-hmm. that, that's not how they started, right? No, it was the DVD, right? That you yep. rented. Yeah. Right? That's how we started with the delivery service. Us too. Their algorithm creation goes back to them. They were already looking at what are people renting. Data. What are people? It's all data. What, it's all data. Yep. And so the data, the data crunching has gotten better, but the user experience maybe hasn't. And they, they get feedback, right? They know that people are kind of overwhelmed yep. by this. And it, it's, it's too much for most people to kind of deal with. And you probably lose eyeballs at some point. There's some quantity of people who cannot decide and they just walk away. That's not what they're about. Well, and, and, and you have a window of time to watch something. That's right. And if you used half of your window of time typing in letters and scrolling through and trying to come up, you're like, all right, well, now I can't watch anything. My time's up. I, you know, <laughs> I, I just wasted it. Yeah. I'm just getting a shower, going to bed. I'll, I'll try again tomorrow when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm more awake and more agile. You know. I think that all of the streaming services have to deal with this, and whether it's the, inter- the interface or getting the information to people, you know, and a lot of people are going to be like you and I, where you, you hear the buzz, you see the buzz in your newspaper or in, right. in your, your social media feed or yeah. somewhere. And you hear about some top show 50, that's on top 50 shows you should be watching or one of whatever. those things. Right. Or you, or it may be as simple as watching the CBS morning show on Sunday mornings and seeing an interview with Kate Winslet. And then, oh, she's got a new show on HBO. Right. It, it's it can that's how people find out. But there's no more TV Guide anymore, no, right? No. So, well, there is, but but that's not how people are getting their their recommendations. Right, it's just not the same, right? But for a lot of people that don't do that, they are okay. I'll just turn on Netflix and see what's on. Well, it's not. Know, it, it, it's hard for me. It's like when I first started really, really digging into whiskey and beer and all that kind of stuff. I think you have to find somebody that has similar taste, you know, as yourself, and then and just kind of figure out. All right, well, they like this. I like this. They're recommending this. All right, I'll give it a try. You know, if it's someone that's going to just keep recommending stuff that you just don't like, you know, like Mike before didn't like peated whiskey. Now it's hey, there's a brand new release from uh, you know from Kalila. I know we kicked you. We dra- we ruined kicked, my life. We kick, we dragged you kicking and screaming through the peat bog. And now he's watching yeah, so, anime too. See, and da- what he and has, Danish murder stories. He essentially has Stockholm syndrome with whiskey. <laughs> That's why I said Danish. With everything, really. Yeah, I, I water. <laughs> I want to we, go to Stockholm. We waterboarded him with Lagavulin, and now he actually likes it. What's interesting I found in this uh, article on Vulture was about the Netflix top ten lists. You know, we see that right on the, on the homepage. Right now, is that a world? rankings or is it just like so you know your your native country or so you work? would think it's something like that right you think it's something as as global as what's everybody watching well it's right. not interesting uh i'm gonna quote this uh, from this article um those categories are actually personalized content that also happens to be popular so they're actually taking what you watch okay the algorithm takes what you watch and curates those lists based on what you watch. And other Even people... the top ten, though? Yes. Um, so wait, yeah. wait, wait. So if I look at the top ten on my screen and you look it, at the top ten on your screen, they correct. could be completely different? Correct. So we may not based all on, have... Based on our taste preferences. Interesting. Sure. Yeah. So yep. Queen's Gambit could be like number one for me, but it could be like number seven for Mike. That's right. I did not know that. That's right. 
So or it might not be on my list because I'm not interested. Uh, my algorithm doesn't show I want to watch that ever. Right. Some of the cat- and I'll have something else on. You're there. more of a British yeah. baking show kind of guy. He I really think. is. Pro- well, based on what you know, the, the, my little guy watches, yes, yeah. I'll be basically cooking shows, panna cotta, and uh, you know, this. for everyone. So back to what you said, Ange, about how you kind of gravitate towards people who have similar tastes. Right. That's what this is. Those lists are based on people who have similar tastes as you. So then you're going to see other similar shows to Queen's Gambit popping up in that top ten list. I'm on this uh, this uh, Scandinavian crime drama bent, and I see a lot of this stuff showing up in the, my, my lists. Yeah. I didn't – why is – Borderland or Hinterland or Frozenland or Snowland on my. <laughs> why are they all yeah. showing up on my? It's because I'm the watching Lutefisk. It. <laughs> the Lutefisk land. <laughs> um, and, and, and for whatever reason, just Frozen. It's a good show. Just Frozen. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix admits its rankings aren't based on the average audience size of a title. The way the way Nielsen measures linear TV consumption. Sure. sure. Instead. The streamer uses what it calls a choose-to-watch standard, which tallies how many people sample at least two minutes of a given title. Because the shows that are like, that have been on forever, like Mike and, and uh, Grey's Anatomy, Anatomy you know, it's right? through. Yeah. So that's been on for 20 years or yeah. close, yeah. and it's an hour-long show. That yep. skews the number towards yep. that, right? So that's not how Netflix looks at things, yeah. which I think is really interesting. It's a, it's a whole different way of looking at the way TV people view television well and it actually is useful it's like the new york times bestseller list but curtailing that to something i'd actually read Hmm. as opposed to whatever you know political party puts out a book and everyone in the party buys it and they you know so it's almost like a concierge service yeah Yeah, it is and so the question is that you know netflix will say one thing but you have to wonder is yes it is curated based on you uh, and people similar to you, you, your viewing habits, are they still pushing certain content that they want to push to you? Yeah. Or is it really kind of this, you know, wow, everyone's watching these really low-rated TV shows. Yeah. Or is it the stuff that they really want to push towards you, like Bridgerton, things that they've, that right. they've made themselves? Yeah, shows that they own and they get but, all the rights but to. But then and, what and does it matter to, yeah. if, if you're just paying the subscription? You know what I mean? Like, what does it matter to them what you watch? Well, I think it would matter because they want to know whether they should, they should be spending What they should money. invest in. Or, That's right. right. Should we be investing yeah. in Israeli TV shows or should we should. be investing in outsourcing shows here in the States to Shonda Rhimes? Right. Yeah. And should that show come back for a second season or a third That's season right. or a fourth season? Or should we just say, thank you, let's move on now? Right, right. It, it's an interesting business. And it's, it's tough because – and the thing that sucks – Netflix probably has one of the better interfaces, I think, or at yeah. least one of the more attractive interfaces. Amazon's an absolute disaster. It's horrible. And Hulu and, was a disaster. No, but look at Amazon, though. I think when I look at Amazon Prime Video, right. whatever it's called, uh, yep. Prime Video, um, yeah. the fact that I can't remember the name is a, is a, is a factor, I think. That speaks volumes. It does. Yeah. It, it is as annoying as Amazon's website. The shopping Correct. site, which uh-huh. is so much crap that's pushed towards you, such as yep. all the sponsored, whether it's sponsored content yep. or yep. sponsored product. Which I don't even know what that means. It's stuff that they want to sell more than, than you, the things that you want to actually buy. And I find that Amazon Prime is very similar. I'm still not crazy about HBO Max's, uh, even though they're going to be no, a sponsor. No, their interface isn't very good either. But again, with that, at least we know what they have because HBO is such done such a yep. good job of marketing their own programming i have not been on disney plus much so i don't know how that looks it's okay if you know what you're looking for but if you're trying yeah. to find something i think it's all very difficult we're apple folks here in this household and so we've got a couple apple tvs and the apple remote is like the worst designed thing in the world and it gets lost, and it's horrible. And apparently, they have a new one coming out that's that actually is like a rug of the remote. But it's it's work when you get on these streaming services. It's not simple. Netflix is trying to address that to some extent and allowing the user to find things quicker and not be so exhausted by the process. So that that's what leading all this up to something that they've got now, which is an op a choice that you can make it on on the on the website or on the. They've had it for the last couple of months. I, I haven't tried it, 
It's called Play Something, it. I believe. To be honest, I've kind of like, unless the show has a lot of big buzz on that, on Netflix, I haven't really been on Netflix that much lately. I found more stuff on you know HBO Max just because I'm catching up on all the shows I didn't watch before. You know, so like I'm catching up on the Nick and I'm catching up on this the investigation, and, and all that kind of stuff. I think they they curate their material a little better because they're actually content producers. They were content producers before they went into the streaming. You know, so they already had a catalog, and a catalog that I'm kind of behind on. So it's a good opportunity to catch up. Yeah, uh, I think the two that I'm mostly on is uh, um, Netflix and HBO. And so I see the, the the good and the bad, and it, it's work to find things. Uh, I, I'm not for us. Poor us. Yeah. Poor us. Poor me. First world. First world problems, I guess, huh? Yeah, Very I can't good. find what I want to watch. Fast I don't know enough. what to watch. <laughs> such whiny bastards. Aren't My we? life is so sad. You know, it, uh, on the weekends I will watch. Uh, by the way, this is you know this is proving the greatest generation was really the greatest generation. In, it really, yeah. This is the whiniest we're really, generation. We're the mediocre generation. <laughs> highly, highly whiny, highly mediocre. Oh, speaking yeah, of I'm that, I'm thinking we're not top five. Speaking of that, you know, <laughs> have you seen the 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 one show, the new show that's out on uh, also on HBO Max, Hacks, with Gene Smart? Oh, it just came I out. Just saw, I, I just saw. I just saw. I just saw a the preview for that. I want to see it. Promo. I was. Yeah. She it, is on a roll. I said the same thing to my wife last night. She is on an amazing late era career role. She's just and she's amazing. Really good. She's really, really good. It wasn't that long ago that she was the uh, the the blonde bombshell on that designing women. She was she was the Suzanne Summers of that show. She is just what was the the Watchmen? Yeah. She was great at that. Who is this person? Yeah. And and yeah. on Mayor of Easttown, which we'll talk about, and and yeah. this the one that she's got now, she's the lead actress in, and she's probably pushing seventy. Yeah, she. I think she's like sixty nine years old or so, almost yeah. seventy years old. God bless she's her. She's really great. good. She's amazing. And, and you know what? It gives us hope that there is. You know, you can have a late Meh. career Meh. in a lot of stuff. So, so something might pan out for me when I'm in maybe. my late sixties. <laughs> maybe I don't know. <laughs> I'm still trying out. to figure out what I want to do with Meh. my life. So yeah, but she's really good in it, and she's she's great on Mayor of Easttown. So I think if if you can do an MVP for for actress in any series anywhere, I think Jean Smart should get it. She is kicking ass in in a late career. I wasn't a big fan of hers before, uh-huh. and I've become a I'm becoming a really big fan of hers. She's yeah. really good. So this show she plays like um, like a Las Vegas headliner. You know, let's say like Don Rickles was doing a couple nights a week at the Bellagio. So right. that's her. And she just basically goes up there and does stand up. She had like a sitcom. She's an actress, but now she's got this thing going on. And who was the guy that played Shooter McGavin in um, Happy Gilmore? Uh, Christopher um, McDonald. Okay, yeah. So Chris McDonald plays, yeah. like he's the hotel owner. He's the casino owner. So I guess he's like the right. Steve Wynn. And she's on, like, she does, like, two nights. I think she does, like, Friday and Saturday night shows. And he's basically just trying to get younger talent. So he's like, look, you know, look, I'm not, I'm not sidestepping you. You know, you can still do your shows. And there's a whole rift with them, I guess, because she's trying to, he's trying to get younger people into the casino and all this stuff. And she's still like, right. look, I'm kicking ass. And then she's also got, like, a whole QVC thing where she's selling whatever, jewelry or clothing. Right, right. And she's loaded. She's absolutely loaded. And so her agent decides to bring in a writer for her. The, the writer is in California. And she actually, like, put out a tweet or something. And she got in trouble. She got fired from her show. So this poor girl is, like, out of work and all that. So she flies out to Las Vegas to meet up with Gene Smart's character. And it's just the whole thing of them trying to figure out what's going on. So it was pretty good. I watched two episodes of it. And it was interesting. She was great. Can you stream the whole thing or is it just uh, uh No, they're releasing it, like, an episode a week. Oh, okay. Which, you know, I kind of like that because, like, the whole – it's nice to binge a show, but when you binge a show, I think you lose a lot of detail, you know? So it's nice to have something to look forward to. I like binging. Yeah, I think binging is fun. It is. It has its moments. I live 90% of my life not binging. I was waiting for the next episode of MASH every freaking week, and now I don't have to do that, and I, I like it. But, yeah, so so I would say I, I like the first two episodes of Hacks. The first episode, you're just trying to kind of figure out what's going on. But the second episode right. was really good, and, and everything starts to click. So it, it was kind of fun. And it's like a half-hour show. I wouldn't say it's like a laugh-out-loud comedy, but I just like their right. chemistry. I like the acting. Um, it's, you know, it's got its moments. It's, you know, someone reaching their later career, 
and people trying to force a younger person in and you know all that kind of stuff that she's wrestling with so it, it's interesting and she's well, really good at it well Gilo has moved yeah. us into our, our last category here of what we are watching smart of watching G smart uh, yeah. watch what we're watching while we're drinking um, what we're watching currently so you started off with uh, the new one from Gene Smart, and I think uh, it's hard not to, but uh, we've already touched on it a bit, hard not to talk about uh, something from your world, uh, Mayor of Easttown. Yep. And, and you know what's funny? When that first show came out, I I thought, I didn't know anything about it. I thought they were saying the mayor of Easttown. So did because I. It was, <laughs> and because it was Kate Winslet, I assumed it was in England. So did I. <laughs> and I'm like, what? It's in Philly. Or outside of Philly, Delaware County. It's a Delco show? What the hell? How far is this? Uh, give me some... Not far. Like the airport. Within like an the hour. Philadelphia airport? Oh, okay. Within, no, okay. it's the airport. Half it's right outside the airport. Okay. Like Chester, all that stuff. It's like 10 minutes from there. So it's like 20 minutes from yeah. us? Yeah. 25 minutes? Yeah. If that. Yeah, 25 minutes. So it's... it's uh, we should talk about it a little bit. It's HBO Max starring Oscar winner. Has she won an Oscar? Uh, Kate Winslet? I think so. Uh, yeah, I think she yep. has. A huge name like kind of in the Amy Adams category of uh, actresses that have gotten shows on uh, HBO. And she has this... Uh, I think eight, she's more like... I think she's the new Meryl Streep with all her she, accent work and all that kind of stuff. She is wonderful as an actress. We, I think we can all agree on that. She's just... she can. She's a chameleon. She can play anything. Um, she, she can be funny. She can be uh, tough. She can be gritty. She can be gorgeous. She can be sophisticated... Anything you need her to be, she can be. Period pieces. She's just an amazing actress of our time. I, I didn't, I didn't like her that much when I first saw. The first thing I ever saw her when was she was in a New Zealand movie, with which I think was um, Pete Jackson's first movie, like Beautiful Creatures. Maybe I can't remember the name of the movie. Oh yeah, they they uh, they kill somebody, right? I forget. I, I just didn't Till care for the movie. It was a little bit over the top. But then I saw her in Sense and Sensibility, and then I was like, all right, okay, I'm all in. She's great. Heavenly Creatures. Heavenly That's Creatures. It, Heavenly yeah. Creatures. Right? Yeah, yeah it was a weird movie. Creatures. And the other woman, yeah. the other actress, she's done some American stuff. She did. She was on uh, um, Two and a Half Men. Oh, was she? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah she was on Two and a Half Men. And other stuff. And, and, she, and again, just like Kate Winslet, she goes with a full American accent. You wouldn't even think she was from somewhere else. Right, right, right. Yeah, she was in another show with, uh, on HBO, uh, Togetherness. It was one of the Duplass Brothers shows. And she was very good in that. That not Kate Winslet, but the other woman that was in Heavenly Creatures, Melanie Linsky. Yeah, yeah, she was really, really good. So, but anyway, yeah, going back to Mayor of Easttown, and we got Gene Smart and uh, Guy Pierce, and you know, it's it's this is a it's a pretty good list of names in this thing, and it it feels like an HBO show, right? It feels yeah. like this. We've been down this road before with a small town crime, small town cops, small town crime, and it's got to be solved. But it feels movie-like in some ways. I'm not completely enthralled with the whole thing. I've liked a lot of it. And she's spectacular. It could be anybody doing these this episode. It, this The star, right? Anyone yeah. probably could reach, pick somebody like Reese Witherspoon. Well, it you probably, know, actually, what's interesting, now that you say that, when I first started watching it, it was, it was actually kind of distracting that it was Kate Winslet. It was yeah. hard... To get past the first season, first episode too. I agree with you because it's a big star yeah. doing this cop show. It is a little bit discombobulating. Yeah. Um, and and it was funny that. because we're watching it the whole. I'm watching it with my wife, and the whole time, you know, because they really, they really made a big thing about the accent. Apparently, the Philadelphia accent has been very elusive, and no one's yeah. ever tried it. They're like, oh, even with Rocky, you know, he's basically doing a New York accent. He didn't even try to do a South Philadelphia accent, and they just went really, really heavy on it. So every time they said something like like hoagie or overdose, and we're just like we repeat the word every single time, so we're just kind of yeah. laughing the whole way. But um, but once you get past it, and once you start getting into the whole the real drama of the show, and I don't I think the murder is just, or maybe it's a murder, maybe it's an abduction. They're a little cagey on all that stuff. Right. Well, there is one murder, but the other two, the other two, uh, because there's like three things going on. Um, that's kind of like. Not it's not really the heart of the show though, right? It's more like the relationships and how this town is all interconnected. Yeah, you know, it's almost like like um, with with my brilliant friend. You know, all these people are just ugh. Like, why do they stay? <laughs> sure. You know, it's so yeah. horrible, and everyone's just so everyone knows each other so well, but not in a way like oh my god, it's my friend. No, just everybody hates each other. 
it's just crazy. There's so much animosity and so much stuff that's built up over the years. It's just interesting. I uh, like this conversation about the ongoing conversation about the, the language and the dialect um, uh-huh. of the area. I find that, well, maybe that's why I watch a lot of foreign stuff, but um, I find that very intoxicating when you can watch a show in a specific place and the mm-hmm. and it it's talking in the right language right. um show there aren't very many but there are have been some shows that have been in pittsburgh or western pennsylvania which has its own unique dialects yep. uh yep. baltimore go back to um the wire, uh, the wire. uh you know, we're, we're used to oh, New York's New York, right? And everyone has this New York accent. Yep. Of course, there's different parts of New York, and people speak differently within New York, too. The dialect and language is almost another character in the show, mm-hmm. and it cannot be minimized. It's a big yeah, deal. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah you, you, uh, regionality is important. You know, the Wawa and, and the kind the of food people eat. Yeah, those are <laughs> – yeah, every place has their own. Boise has its own thing, too, and so does – Yep. So does uh, San Diego, but um, yep. and you want things to be realistic, and we, I always get a kick of hearing uh, some production production person talking about how when they got the show together, we spent like three weeks in San Diego and we learned all about tacos. Well, that's just really great. I'm glad you did that because we really we don't want the people in you know New York thinking that people in San Diego don't eat tacos. Um, yeah. Okay, we get it, but. When you get to the to the level of language that people are speaking, that I think is really cool. That really kind of cements a that show e- to me. Even her, even her name is Mare. Yes, and right. it, I actually think which, in the fourth episode they actually say her whole name. Yeah, well, it's, Marianne. Which is it, Marianne? Which here your names, your names like Mary, Marianne, Marie, whatever. Right, right, but right. it gets butchered, and it's Mare. And I have friends who call their friends Mare. Oh, I was talking to Mare the other day. And you're like, Mayor? Who the hell's Mayor? The guy I went to, this guy, I went to the guy who grew up, grew up across the street from me. His sister's name was Marianne. We yeah. always called her Mayor. Mayor. So. Because why would you shorten that to Mayor? Why what not? Is that? That's just. I just think that's great. And, and the, just the, the Sam Adams guy doing those commercials. Yeah. Your cousin from Boston. That's right. <laughs> well, well, you know what? There, there was actually, there was one scene in the show, in the, in the first episode. Remember when she goes to visit the, the older woman, the old lady? And, you know, because she's complaining about the guy behind him. Yeah. And she's just going on and on and on. It's like, you could have just called the main number. No, I wanted to call you. I'm like, all right, she nailed it right there. This was like, all right, I know about 500 people like this. Yep. What was that show, Ange, we watched on uh, Prime? Uh, The kids in high school. It was a kid's name. Oh, Wayne? Wayne. And they're all from, like, uh, Broxton, Massachusetts, or place. And not in the city. And... uh, the language and the dialect there was just over, not uh-huh. over the top. I'm sure that was very realistic. Uh-huh. And then when they go to Florida, it's a whole different language. It's a, a south, like, yeah. Right, it's a whole, right. rural Florida is yeah. a very different world, yeah. right? So yeah. we were, yeah. big plus on uh, Mirror of East Town. Uh, another episode coming up this week. We're excited about yeah. it. I mean, I think it's it's a little uneven at times. I'm not saying I it's agree. like the greatest show ever, but but again, the performances are what are what's saving it. Jean Smart is great. She is just fantastic. And there, there are there are two people in the uh, as supporting players. Uh, David Denham, who played Roy in The Office. Okay, he's actually building a really really big resume as a supporting guy. Yeah. And Evan Peters, who most people probably know from the Marvel movies, right, where right, he's right. playing uh, Quicksilver. Again, he's another guy who's like, I figured my niche. I'm not going to be the leading guy, but I can get a whole lot of work. Being this other guy, right, right. I'm going to be the other guy. Oh, that's right. Denim and is the guy who's playing Mayor's ex-husband. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And and uh, Evan Peters is the guy who was Quicksilver and all this, and, and he was in just in uh, WandaVision, oh, no. and now he's in this. And you're like, this guy's showing up everywhere because he's, I'm going to, here's my wheelhouse. I'm going to stay in this wheelhouse and we get a lot of work. There's something to be said about being a working actor. Yeah. Actually, yep. you know what? Going yeah. back to Grey's Anatomy, I was listening to one of, I was listening to uh, The Watch Pod. And they were talking about train spotting, and they were talking about Kevin McKidd. Kevin McKidd and you had Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor was in pretty much everything. Yep. Meanwhile, you've got Kevin McKidd, who kind of was like, you know, he was in Rome. 
He took yep. some other parts, but then he latched on to Grey's Anatomy. How many seasons is he on that? And he's probably been on 12 seasons of Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, so they're like, okay, so you get the steady paycheck. It's like, who's got the better career? And and not just that, but they let you direct. Yeah. So he's probably directed 10 episodes, maybe, of the show. Yeah. We're like, yeah, if I was in something else, no one lets me direct, and that's my next step, because I'm not going to be able to act forever. I hope to go be a director somewhere. That's funny. Well, it's like funny. I talked to my son, because you know, he went to the Kristen Milioti School of Acting in Cherry Hill. And, yes. you know, or he's going to, I should say. And I'm like, you know what? You could be like the next Buscemi. Just you build go. a solid, you just build a solid career, you know, just be, there's nothing wrong. And he eventually went into a leading role. He had five, what, five, six seasons on um, Boardwalk Empire? Yep. No, oh, don't even talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still scarred by the first episode. Buscemi's butt. I'm sorry. Buscemi ass. Uh, That's not I love Buscemi. He is so funny. Uh, he is good. Um, he is really, really and, he, good. and he latched on to uh, to Adam Sandler. Yeah. And Sandler used him in everything. Yeah. Not that he latched on, but Sandler probably really liked him and was like, hey, you know what? I, I could put you in here for 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. 10 minutes in a movie. Well, he got and him he and he, he got John Turturro too, didn't he? I think he's in the, uh, the, the he's jewelry one he was just in. And he was in Mr. Deeds. Uh, a show that I am watching currently... Um, and it just came out on Apple Apple Plus last weekend, and uh, my daughter and I stream uh, binged the first season. Uh, this actually is connected to you guys too, Mythic Quest on Apple oh, okay. Plus. Yeah, yeah and his name went to, is from Philip. Rob McElhenney. Is, right. is that his name? Rob McElhenney. He went to St. Joe's Prep, and uh, he is the one of the creators and stars of. Uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah. I was stunned when I saw this because there's been a lot of press about the, the new season of Mythic Quest. I think I saw that the Sunny in Philadelphia has been on for 14 seasons. I watched the first two seasons and I just never liked the characters, and I just I couldn't keep watching. I read an article about the new uh, season of Mythic Quest, which we could talk. I'll talk about in a second, but it, it's. It's a workplace show. McElhenney is is based it primarily on, if I understand correctly, because he's one of the showrunners of uh, and creators of um, Sunny in Philadelphia. It's always Sunny. It's based on the workplace there, of the inner workings of that show. Uh, not, oh, sure, not, I can see that. Right? Yeah, I can. So see that. it doesn't matter that it, it, they're they're making a TV show. It's an office, right? And they're. Mm-hmm. Everyone has to work together, and there's there's downtimes. There's all the normal things that happen in a, in a corporate environment. So he's taken this new show, which is based on a, a video game company. The the product is not important. It's how the people that make the video game interact with each other. Right. Um, nobody cares that the office was about office products and paper. It, it's yep. about the people working with each other, and that's what this is. And I came upon it by chance. And my daughter sat with me and watched the first episode. It gets into some territory that I'm maybe not sure that a 17-year-old uh, should be watching with their dad. But it's so damn funny. On uh-huh. the, the cast is so great. F. Murray Abraham is in the cast. Uh, Danny, and he's loopy on that show. He is loopy in that show. Danny, he is bizarre. Danny P- uh, Putty Pooty from uh, Community is in this show. Right. Um, yeah. Charlotte... Op-head. Ahmed, right? Uh, sh- the 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 lead uh, female actress, Char- who I don't know where she's from, Charlotte Nick Dow. She's a Filip- Filipino actress. Uh, she is just outstanding, playing it, uh, opposite of Rob McElhenney. It is so so funny. And two things about it: they do the season, the first season, and it I think it ended about the time. Uh, the pandemic started. The very last episode of season one is entirely like a Zoom episode. So they they were all locked down at home, and they're having <laughs> to do everything all on Zoom. Right. It is so funny, and and within the, the the concept of what we're all what we've all lived through for you know a year plus, and then they did a bonus episode to get you ready for season two, which is coming out of lockdown. And uh, how, how is that all going to work? It's a really good show. I, I highly recommend it. It's very, very funny, and it really touches on a lot of things that most people deal with in their off in their their regular day. And yeah, I started it. I've got to go back to it. You got to be careful with kids. Gets into some. 
wacky language and things, but uh, it's really good. It's very, very and, and getting back to It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, I just Googled it, and uh, it's the longest-running live-action comedy series in television history. Holy wow. crap. And I don't know that I've seen a whole episode. And Neither Angela, you said you've never watched it at all. No. I vaguely remember it. No. I remember... I remember that I wanted to watch it because it was about a bar. Uh, beyond that, I can't tell you much more. And Danny DeVito comes in as a as a character at some point. Is he still on? In 2020, it got picked up for four more seasons oh to give it 18. God. It'll God. be on for 18 seasons Jesus. by the time it's over. And one of the guys from that with uh, McElhenney, uh, Charlie Day, yeah. is one of the creators of the other show you're just talking right. about. Yeah, Charlie Day is the... So the two of them moved over with one of the, I guess, the head writers or something, and they made this new show. And is it... Mythic Quest. Is, so. Isn't McElhenney married to the, the lead actress? I think so. On yeah. It's Sunny? On It's Sunny, yeah. yeah. that's his yes. wife. Right. Yeah. She's a writer, too. Who was it? Caitlin the, Olsen? No. Yeah, uh, Caitlin oh, Olsen. Oh, that's okay. right. Caitlin Olsen. Yep. Okay. Uh, he, I actually heard an interview, interview with him talking about being on lockdown, and he's got younger kids himself and introducing his kids to shows that he watched. This is a strange story. The show that got him excited about television. You would never guess what it is. And I'm not even going to ask you. It's the Golden Girls. <laughs> oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard him on the interview with... So many people uh, love that. Was that? Oh, it was, on the, it was on The Watch. Right, was it was the, on the Chris right? Ryan interview. With Chris Ryan, yeah. And, and he watched it with his kids, right? He watched it with, well, ultimately he watched it with his kids, and but I he think said, like, isn't like Betty White, like one of his neighbors or something? Betty White is one of his neighbors and she's like a goddess to him, <laughs> but he, and Angelo, he's such a Blanche. He really is. He's such a <laughs> Blanche. Me? Absolutely. Yeah. He a, was I wish, amazed I wish I was a Blanche. that these four characters had this like chemistry together. They all had their, their little niche on the show and they kept on it all the time. They just they yeah, were on it yeah. for, for however long the show was on, yeah. and that was just a driving force for him to be in television. And then he turned his kids onto it. They 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 binged that, and then he the kids turned him. In fact, the kid the kids turned him on to Adventure Time, and so they were going back and forth on shows with him and his kids during during the lockdown. So uh, he learned a lot about his kids. And he learned and learned about about himself as well. You guys watch anything else currently that uh, you want to mention? My God, man, we're at, we're at two hours. We I know, I got here. two. I got a couple. I want to catch up. All right, all right. I, there are a couple of things I want to watch. Oh, we're not there yet. Okay. So I got uh, one that I think you guys should jump on because it's really bizarre and <laughs> funny. It's called Frank of Ireland. It is on oh, Amazon. Oh, I, I saw this. Okay. And, um, it I almost is, turned it on, I think, at it's, one point. The, the lead actor's name is Brian Gleason. I don't, he looks so familiar. I don't know where he's from. He plays this uh, 30-something ca- guy. Oh, you know, you, you know who that is, no, right? No, who is he? Brian Gleason. His, his dad's uh, Brendan Gleason. Wait, does he have two kids that are acting? Because he has the other one, too. He's got a whole, a whole bunch of kids that are acting. His brother is the one that's uh, Dom Holt Gleason's the right, one right. from uh, Star Wars and oh, Harry Potter. Oh, right. And okay. He's the it? father's uh, Brendan Gleason. Right. Yeah. I like so Brendan Gleason. he plays a 30-something pain in the ass who has gotten nowhere in life and lives with his mom. And his mom is a, a lush, and she sleeps around, and she wants him kicked out of the house. He, but he kind of won't leave. And his best friend, and you're going to like this, his best friend is uh, Domal Gleason. I guess that maybe it's his brother. It's his brother. Right? Oh, his brother. okay. Yeah. Who, his name is Doofus in the show. And <laughs> he's the star of that, uh, eight, I think it was oh, HBO. Run. Or was it? Run. Which was not and very good. Uh, he ha- it's a lesser character in this show, but he's so good in it. Um, it's crazy about this, you know, like I said, 30 something who just cannot get a regular job. He thinks he's a, he thinks he's a singer songwriter and he's not. And he screws up every episode by his idiocy. It's weirdly funny. And it's Irish. Need I say more? It's in Ireland. Okay. Need I say more? <laughs> it's fun. So it's half hour, little sitcom. Um, I'm also st- uh, another one that I'm watching is uh, Mosquito Coast on Apple Plus. Oh, I was going to say that that's on my that's on my to watch. Yeah, I, I just got because I little... saw that I I didn't know what it was about, and I saw the trailer, and it looks really good. It is, and I 
could not tell you the names of these character, these actors and actresses in there. Um, it's about a family who are living in Fresno. Let's say Fresno. And they are, you don't know this in the beginning, but they are basically living a life away from some secret, uh, like, uh, like a witness protection program. They can't contact their family outside of the four of them, the husband and the wife. And uh, somehow, whoever is after them, which is, turns out to be the government, uh, and it's, they're after the dad, um, so they're on the run. They have to get on the run. They have to get out of town. Oh, uh, the actor is Justin Thoreau. Yeah, why do I know in, that guy? Where's he, he from? Was he in was in the, uh, the Leftovers. He was the cop in The Leftovers. And he was also married to Jennifer Aniston, wasn't he? Or, Jennifer Aniston, yeah. Ah, he was married okay. married Aniston. or dating or whatever. They married, were. yeah. And married. I believe it's a, a based on a novel. Um, and I it, right. They they ultimately I think get out of the U.S. Is it related um, to the movie, the one with uh, Harrison Ford? Is it the same story? Or I is it don't different? know that. It's one of those big. It's one of those big Apple things that uh, they put poured money into for content uh, for Apple Plus. So I've seen the first two, three episodes. I think, it, and they come out on Fridays. Um, I'm sucked in. Um, uh. And the last one that I started watching, because I can't, I have to end on a Scandinavian note. And How do you find that time? I'm watching Border, because I, well, forget. I'm watching Border Town. And that's how I was made the, uh, earlier. Border Town, Hinter Town, Frozen Town, Snow Town. Uh-huh. And it's a uh, crime drama. Uh, the lead character is a, a blonde actress who uh, has lost her husband. She's taking care of her two kids. And now she's on this this murder mystery, trying to solve a crime, and it's all in Helsinki, and it's always snowing, and uh, bad guys with wind farms and uh, uh, murders. Wind farms? Yeah, some technology guy who's got some great idea for a wind farm, but he's there's a murder and bodies are popping up, and she's going to solve it, and she's a she's got problems because she's her husband was killed or something i don't know but i'm sucked in and i think there's like four seasons of it on netflix so i and it's in a foreign language and there you go there you go there you go good luck good luck there you go <laughs> yeah now mosquito coast and, I, and i'm curious to try the underground railroad and also going to finish up for all mankind and hacks and i forget what oh and of course we can't forget mayor of east Town. And, and by the way, I just I finished while we were jap, yapping away here. I uh, I finished the Glen Scotia uh, 2017 a single cask uh, at 57.8. And you also binged nice. the first and second ep- first and second season of For All Mankind. I am going to just now. I, I, no, you know, you, you know, did it right now. now. No, while we yes, talked, you watched. You know, you have to be efficient with your time. I try to. Be, be it's that microchip technology. That's what it in, is. In front of in front of the screen, he's got eleven screens. He's watching. Every streaming Scandinavian show right now as well. So he's like a bond trader on like uh, in like Wall Street. <laughs> Absolutely. Except he's just watching TV as opposed to absolutely you know watching stocks <laughs> instead of making money. Yes. <laughs> so I watch I watch in the mornings on my bike. I watch I'm, like I'm watching Border Town right now. Uh, every morning I watch one episode, and then when I come home and I'm making dinner, I'll have an iPad on the on the island and I'll be watching a, a show. And then, I actually have slowed down because I've got other projects. work I'm, projects I'm doing, and I don't have as much time. But uh, so that's it. I'm watching. And See, he's got the, a production deal with HBO Max, and he's not telling us about it. That's sh- the deal. I think so. No, interesting about Border Town. <laughs> I had my second shot a week ago. Whiskey? No, vaccination. Ah, oh, vaccination. And, and uh, night two, night two and three were not good nights. Fever and, dreams? Uh, I was not, uh, yeah, I was uh, up a lot. So I just, I uh, decided to start watching something, and I was on the roller coaster of finding something on Netflix, watching what my, my friends are watching, my similar friends in the world are watching in, the, in my, my feed, because we now know how that works. And Border Town came out. I should be watching huh. Border Town, because all of my friends are watching Border Town, apparently. It was a number five on my my hot trending list. So I started watching. Your decision fatigue ended. <laughs> it has ended right. until I'm done with Border Town. <laughs> so anything that we want to watch, I guess we got a we had a couple there that we threw out that we 
want to uh, and showed a couple you want to watch like I said, so just, uh, put Mosquito your Coast I'm curious about and Underground Railroad and I just continue with what, what else is going on and then whatever pops up you know these things are popping up all the time yeah. so Mike how about you I think I'm going to rewatch The Nick because now that the new season's coming out so I think I want to watch that to catch up yeah it was good it was, refresh it was very good yeah, I think I'll watch Hacks, too. Yeah, yeah, Hacks is for... I'll watch that. I think you'll like it. it was, again, the first episode was a little, you know, you just got to gotta get it. It's got to get its footing. Set up. And you have to, yeah, you got yeah, you you to have... set the story. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Backstory. After that, it was, yeah, second episode was good, though. It was, it was yeah. really, really funny. Well, gentlemen, this was uh, great to get together, as usual, for the uh, for the, the chat and the drink. My God, did we catch up. How long was We did. Hey, you know, this is what we do. This is what we do. We watch. Episode 14. We talk about what oh we watch when God. we drink. 14 of these in, in the in the can. Literally 14. in the can. In the can. This one might go in the can. <laughs> Literally should go in the can. And we'll lit on fire. And knocked over in the middle of the night by some kids. All right. Play us off. So, great episode, guys. Good whiskey. Good shows. Good stuff we're going to watch eventually. Listeners, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google, Stitcher, Audible, Spotify, and anywhere else you can get your podcasts. And, of course, you can always find us on boozedancing.com. And, again, questions, comments, you know, hate mail, love letters, all that kind of stuff, marriage proposals. We only want them in Norwegian. Well, maybe Danish. Oh, English is okay, sure. Maybe some uh, Eastern Eastern PA uh, dialect. Hoagies. Send the hoagies. I want to say hoagies. Email us, Wawa gift cards, to oh, boozedancing yeah. at gmail.com. Yeah. We like That's our coffee. We like our hoagies. We like our pretzels. We're here for you. All right, gents. Cheers, boys. 